What's up, homies? You're Spartan here. <sighs> I'm gonna start making YouTube videos again, and they're not gonna lock me out of nothing. So, my channel kinda came to an abrupt end. I got my car back, by the way, guys. Channel came to an abrupt end. Um, my phone broke because I think someone hacked into it and I got a new one and for some reason I couldn't get into my YouTube account or my Google accounts or anything like that. So someone's running around with my information. Luckily I called Washington DC, I called Chris Sununu, Maggie Hassan, the FBI, whole branch of fucking different shits, right? You wanna check out the FBI's headquarters uh, address? 2000 Custer Lane, West Virginia. How I know that off the top of my head? I don't know. But the police keep fucking aggravating me about my vehicle. It's a homestead. So if a trucker that owns a house and owns his own trucks gets his house taken away because he can't pay for it, but those trucks are his because he paid cash and he lives in it in New Hampshire, in one of the trucks in New Hampshire, it's a homestead because it has a sleeper cab. It's automatically equity. This Honda Element, see my bed right here? See this bed right here? That seat folds down into this. These seats fold up into the walls and hang off the oh shit handles. This was made as a um, modable, modular camping or extended living vehicle, or what we like to call a suburban utility vehicle, a compact SUV, suburban utility vehicle, which means it's for the suburbans, suburbia, it's for utilities, which houses have, and it's a vehicle, which you can live in, in New Hampshire, and have your New Hampshire Homestead Protection Act rights. In New Hampshire, you don't need to write any paperwork out to claim the automatic exemption. All you have to do is live in your vehicle, and it's covered by $25,000 and automatically granted equity and cannot be indebted to creditors. Not to mention I have my FBI documents in here my Marine Corps DD-214 in here, uh, pieces of Marine Corps property that were standard issue to me that they can't take without getting the proper documentation for uh, destruction because if they take it, then their priority, which conflict of interest based on this, is they'll destroy it, which is a terroristic threat to me and my livelihood and well-being because they keep harassing me and keep fucking following me around. I went to court the other day, July 14th at 9 o'clock. I went to court with this because I'm allowed to drive either home or to a shop without an inspection sticker because I still haven't got it inspected. I just put the rockers in and both trailing arms in. I have an appointment written on a card for uh, next Monday. can't remember which one said Monday. I just went to four different inspection stations today and they're all booked until like a week out from now. Which is alright, I don't mind. And... Well, anyways, I took it to court, and I parked behind a church, because churches offer um, amnesty and stuff like that, and Lancaster is one of my known places that I've lived. So, technically, it wasn't breaking the law. So I drove it behind the church, parked it, and somebody I don't know who it was but they were in a blue vehicle like people around here I don't know what they got for Christmas but all their vehicles look like government vehicles or police vehicles they're all coded color coded to scare people into making them believe that they're law enforcement and they're not I've noticed the trend if you go on uh, any app that lets you watch the world earth from a satellite live and you find one that's recorded it you can find me and my vehicle and all of these people that have been following me around trying to get a reaction out of me, trying to tow my vehicle again to make me homeless and dehumanize me and make me look crazy and shit. Obviously, I have a very good vocabulary and I understand uh, all the technological advances that we have. Regardless of that, it is possible to map all of this and find every single one of these people and exactly where they go. Not to mention satellite phones, cell phones, um, you know, 
the FBI and CIA have the permissions to, like, Mark Zuckerberg, the owner of Facebook, he's a CIA agent. Did you know that? He made Facebook just to fucking make sure people wasn't... You have no clue. Anyways, look all this up. Sorry, I'm getting bit by mosquitoes. I got something on my neck. But, yeah. So, yeah, that's basically where I'm at. Today's date's July 15th, 2022. Um, I called Washington, D.C., uh, the Department of Justice again. Um, I got a hold of... Um, fucking A, what is... What the hell is it called? Oh, fucking, um... The Bureau of Legal Attorneys, or whatever it's called, where, um... Oh, the Attorney General. The one out in Concord. I had to mail them a letter concerning the police and what I found. Uh, and what I've witnessed and what I've gone through. Um, and... And because of all of this... They're fucking up my... Oh, that was right. Uh, that's back on track. I went to court, right? Police Chief Charbonneau out of Lancaster came, found my vehicle after this post-up vehicle or whatever that was watching my rig, called him in and was like... He comes and finds me. He's like, I just got a, a, a phone call saying they complained about your vehicle being there and you can't be there and I'm going to tow it and I'm going to give you a ticket if I see it on the road. And I was like... Do you not read RSAs, Timothy Charbonneau of Lancaster Police Department? New Hampshire. Lancaster, New Hampshire. RSA, double dot, snake colon bite, 8, dash 4A, I believe it is, states that a primary residence under the New Hampshire Homestead Protection Act right cannot be indebted to creditors and cannot be forth held from an individual that owns that property that they reside in and dwell in as a primary residence. They've taken this four times. I have over a hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Not to mention I called the NYPD's internal affairs and had them write the Whitefields sheriff's office to conduct an investigation on the sheriff of why he was at a gas pump at subway uh what eight nine months ago talking to a civilian while i was having a smoke outside someone was in the restroom so i was just waiting outside instead of milling about like a zombie he was laughing to one of the civilians at the gas pump the number 004 sheriff driving a truck big white male white hair uh, a little bit of facial hair i think he was joking to one of the civilians about shooting and killing me. They were pointing at me and laughing, and the sheriff said, Oh yeah, I'm going to shoot that cocksucker. He said that, and I had him. I got him on camera. I sent that into the FBI. Um, the real internal affairs, not the movie, the actual Bureau of Internal Affairs. So now they're going to investigate it too. You know... I understand the cartel and the mafia and the mob and um, all of those guys need to eat, but when you come into my fucking hometown, especially Sparta, I'm going to tell you this right goddamn now. Wrong move. For one. For one. Because first off, you're taking my friends and family's lives. I've got friends and family that are dead in the ground with worms crawling through their body that are younger than I am because people wanted to put them in their truck, get them drunk, get them drugged, and then fucking kill them because they didn't want them remembering the heinous things that happened to them. Which will be investigated. And yeah. Anyways, I'm completely competent, by the way. I was in two uniform services. I had to go through Marine Corps military uh, government-like tests to get into the United States Marine Corps and train at Paris Island, a completely locked-down facility, 
military government facility, Paris Island, South Carolina. 09905, I think is its zip code. And for my hand selection of being a security officer for Lindsay Lohan's All Girl Summer Camp with the certificate of discount for a firearm, a K9, German Shepherd, um, permission to use the rock crawler and night shift duty at a lake that I can't disclose to you all damn night, all damn week. And then I do 105 miles a week on foot training myself running from town to town to town to town around this camp in my off time to remember the landscape and search and rescue things that need to be search and rescued so here's this part the court system because of that whole bullshit that I had to report to the FBI about the graveyard guys seemingly covering up a crime scene in Lancaster, the Lancaster graveyard. They were seemingly covering up a crime scene and making me out to look like the bad guy. They pulled up to the end of the dirt road and blocked me in with their truck and walked up to my car and put their hands on my vehicle, which is assault, first off, is assault and battery, first off. This is private property and it's written on it, right on the windshield, clear as day carted right to the inside of my windshield you can't miss it unless you're blind but you, if you're a blind person and you bump into my car well good luck getting to where you're going because you're bumping into my car but anyways which is assault which i mean this guy's uh what is it charles and Ro charles ball and roger emery which those are public names and they work for the public, but they should have called the police because they were mowing the graveyard lawn or whatever. If I was causing a disturbance, which by the way, I pick up like heroin needles and shit like that. And I have a history with Lancaster police delivering, hand delivering them like used needles from like places that kids swim. Uh, do you know where third dam in Lancaster is? It's a rope swing with a little beach and a fire pit. Most of the time, when you go down there, it's fucking trashed. Remember my YouTube videos way back in the day on my other Bunker 1-5 channel where I had that whole high-strung structure with the picnic table that I made out of rocks and a 10-man tent eight feet in the air? I cleaned that place to that extent because I wanted it to be safe and functional as it is, not a goddamn concrete death trap. But anyways, I hand-delivered needles to the police, Lancaster Police Department, a couple times and told them to go down there and do their jobs because they never go down there. If they don't foot patrol, they sit at their office or they ride around and they look for people to bully. Timothy Charbonneau. Timothy Charbonneau, you remember July 14th when you tried to stop me from going to court at 9 o'clock in the morning by jamming me up with these informants of yours, which is completely illegal? I know personally, since I was a child, because I've been going to that food pantry since I was little, I know personally the young ladies and older women that work there I have done community service in that church. I have eaten out of that church. I have a food card in my wallet from that church. How are you going to tell me that someone from the church said I wasn't allowed there? You being a lying piece of shit? Anyways, anyways, I, I, I digress. So Roger and Charles Balls from the graveyard, which is why I was going to court because they told the police that I got out of my car and was jumping around waving a giant fucking axe. They said that I had a pipe wrench with an axe head welded on it, which I did. It's an axe head that I've had in my family for since I was little. I've had it in my room at my mom's house since I was 15 years old, 14, 13 years old, something like that. I've had that axe head specifically specifically to cut a bearded act a bearded dragon's axe head out of it and mount it on a pipe wrench to keep in my vehicle specifically for an emergency tool to get people out of vehicles or 
to protect yourself from animals that have been hit on the highway or a main road. If you hit a bear and you need to get out of your vehicle and you don't own a firearm or don't or legally can't use a firearm on a main road, you need to be 50 feet at minimum from the center yellow line to discharge a firearm without going to prison. Did you know that? So they took my emergency tool because the guys came up to my vehicle, put their hands on my window, looked in, looked around like this, all up in my shit and said, what are you doing here? They ganged up on me, the both of them. Then they made up a story, the both of them, that doesn't even match up. I have the statements. I have, I have them both from them and I cross-examined them. They don't match. Regardless, I'm innocent. I did not get out of my vehicle. I did not scream or yell. I did not wave a giant 24 drop forge pipe wrench axe around. They asked me my business illegally, which was an illegal interrogation because they're not police. They were workers and they were supposed to be working, not bothering me, a civilian. No gates were closed. It wasn't closed. There was no improper entry of me. It was the middle of day. The graveyard was open, and I wanted to go up there and pick up paraphernalia to bring to the police. They're covering a crime scene. Whether they are doing drugs or the ones doing drugs or uh, hiding something in the woods like a body that's not supposed to be there, I don't fucking care. It's my obligation as United States citizen and a patriot to figure out what the fuck is being hidden in my home. They have a problem with it, and they're going to try and frame me up. Three days after I left the graveyard, we had a cordial conversation. I told them that I had a cell phone. I had a notepad for uh, writing license plates numbers down, which I gave to my private detective. Gave him that notebook with all the license plate numbers in it from the guys up in the graveyard. Not Roger, Emery, and Charles Ball, but kids and fucking shit like that with their cars in the middle of the fucking night. It's graveyards almost always open. Sometimes they leave it open, sometimes they close it. It's kind of go figure. They don't have hours. Like that. Holes and stuff coming up. Prep, shit like that. Fucking sketchy people driving in and out, making sure that they scare people away from little sites because they're creepers sitting in their damn Jeep Cherokees all red. Sunglasses looking like they're fucking nerds. Goddamn posers. Acting like military police like someone else I know. I don't really care. It doesn't affect me. You can do what you're going to do and it's going to bite you in your own ass. Now we go into court for this because three days after I leave that ever having a cordial conversation with these gentlemen, unwillingly giving them my information and what I was doing there, I didn't, I'm not a product. I don't need a disclaimer. Three days after I leave that graveyard, after having a cordial conversation, Woodworth, Sergeant Woodworth, the Lancaster Police Department, New Hampshire, comes and finds me with a search warrant for my vehicle and says, you're under arrest, I'm searching your vehicle. And I said, why? And he said, because Charles and Roger said that you were up at the campground, or up at the fucking graveyard, and he told his story or whatever about what happened. He was like, yeah, we read the statements. Evidently, he didn't read the statements very well because he didn't cross-examine them, which is the first investigative um, lack of articulacy. They need articulable evidence, and they didn't. You can't read Charles because it's in, like, mud language, and Rogers basically says... Charles was freaking out, which he was. They fucking blocked me right in with their truck, which is illegal. That's a booby trap. Did you know that? If it's a public space and workers block you in without a f getting the police, that's escalating the situation and that's a booby trap. Did you know that? Same goes for houses. If you willingly let someone into your house and then hit him in the forehead with a hammer, that's a booby trap. Same thing with churches. If a church isn't marked private property and a mom brings two kids there that haven't met the pastor, they're trespassing and in potential danger. Potential danger. 
because they're trespassers and haven't met the minister or the owner of the property yet. Isn't that fucked? That's how it works, so. So, anyways, I'm trying to go to court July 14th for this at 9 o'clock, and Charbonneau's posted up with this car that's obviously got a civilian in it. So I get out of my car. Charbonneau wasn't even there yet. I didn't even know he existed in his car rolling around or was on duty until uh, I had walked down the street and was starting to walk towards the... Uh, the damn courthouse so I could go inside and press charges on Roger and Emery Ball and Charbonneau finds me and it shuts it down because he knows that I'm probably going to do that. He's trying his best to make me leave and almost got a warrant on me. I had to call the court and explain to them that Char the judge, thank God for the Lancaster Superior Court judge, such a gentleman, he calls me back and he's like, Mr. Fontaine, I understand your situation and I understand that he, he didn't even he didn't even say anything that anybody he was just like today I'm gonna give you all your information you're good to go you're all set uh, we thank you for trying as hard as you could to, to get in here pretty much um, regardless of what happened and who's trying to jam you up and blah 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 now ain't it illegal to interfere with a legal process? Mr. Timothy Charbonneau, isn't it illegal to interfere with a legal process? Because you made me miss my 9 o'clock appointment out of fear, son. Not okay. Anyways, 21 minutes long. I went to court for that, ended up having to come back home because I legally... I work at a shop, which has a welder and all that stuff, and the law is you can drive to a shop or you can drive home. So I drove from the shop home, and then I drove home to the shop, which I sleep at the shop most nights because it's just easier that way. I make money working on the trucks, welding the equipment, all that junk. I don't have to go nowhere. Dollar stores right across the street. I'm talking about 100... Um, I think it's called Frederick's, Frederick's Way in Whitefield... New Hampshire, across from Dollar General, but that's Bob Style's shop, he was letting me stay there, the Apostolic Church, New Beginnings Apostolic Church, I was sleeping out in front of that, which is connected to the same piece of property, you don't have to hit Main Road to go there, and all that happy shit, and everyone knows my situation, everyone knows I've served my country, everyone knows I got kids, Everyone knows that I don't do drugs. You want to see some shit? Look at this. Look at it. Does this look like I do drugs to you? I weld like a motherfucker. I've got a couple weld burns. That's from slag. Uh, I don't even have any good slag holes in me anymore. I got some on my shoulders. Got some on my arms. Dude, I had one go in my eyeball a couple days ago. It wasn't good. But, yeah. Slag burns. And shit. From welding. I don't do drugs. I'm trying to quit smoking cigarettes, too. I haven't had a cigarette in probably three and a half hours. I did walk to town and grab a couple out of a butt tray because I ain't bought a pack in two, three, four weeks. But, I'm stressed, man. I just spent a whole winter in the woods because they want to de dehumanize me and throw me in the woods. Documented, by the way. Old Bunker 1-5 channel. Same damn name. Same damn picture. And they still trying to jam me up and they think they ain't gonna get caught for it. They fucking with a legal process. They are. This is a homestead under the New Hampshire RSA of New Hampshire Homestead Protection Act rights. That's fucking with a legal process. If you disentertain it, if you disengage from your legal obligations to be a dickhead, that means you're being a terrorist. I have put in so many complaints to the manager, the town manager of Lancaster, that I actually called them yesterday and I heard somebody coaching the girl over the phone from behind her, a man, which normally happens around these associations. There's always a man around that's like... 
you're gonna do as we say, woman. I'm not like that. I believe in Valkyries, and I swear to God, I'll fuck you up if you talk to a woman like that. I swear to God. Fuck with my feelings. I'll put your ass in two frying pans and send you down the river. Coaching her, right? Coaching her from behind her. And she's like, oh, he just left. He's not here right now. And I was like, okay, all right. I know, I, 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 I hear what's going on. And I hung up. So I called Washington, D.C. and I reported to them what happened. And then I called Chris Sununu and I gave him about a mile long message. And you know, you want to know what Chris Sununu's secretary's response to this, you know, the girl that's in charge of giving him messages and stuff like that. She was really fucking worried. Really fucking worried about me. She was like, I am going to get this to Chris. Point blank period. I've never heard of something like this in my entire life. And I know it goes on and I know it goes around. And we're going to try and get it taken care of pretty much. So with about the 48 different complaints and calls to the FBI... Washington, D.C., the president. Do you know how much the person that answers the presidential phone gets paid? Do you think for a second that my raggedy ass is going to call them and they're not going to check on who I am? You're funny. And then they're going to cross-examine my intelligence. Well, you know, the Navy's in charge of that. You know, they have access to whatever. This is the United States of America. This isn't your land. This is their land. You remember that big gray hand in the cartoon that picks the guy up and goes, No, this is the state's land. That's how it works. You don't break, you don't follow the law, they're going to take your farm. You can sleep in your car and have your rights and protect, and, but, Oh, I'm going to complain to the, oh no, you have to join the union and become part of the union to complain. By then, it's too late. Your ass is grass. Right? This is the United States of America. If Navy intelligence wants to look at what you're doing on your phone or all these messages and phone calls going on between all these people through Facebook and text messages. Facebook and text messages. Which they do. You know that, right? I hope so. God, I hope so. Anyways. Yeah, that's about it. That's all I have time to say right now. Which, by the way, I've never punched anybody. I've never hit anybody. I've never been physically violent towards anybody. So that right there is the automatic um, proof that Roger and Charles are lying. You know what I'm saying? Like, people show their true characteristics. I'm a soft, nice, gentle guy. I got a loud fucking voice, but I'm smart. When I got blocked in by those two gentlemen and they came up to me and asked me my business illegally interrogating me they did they took me hostage they put their hands on my vehicle they blocked me in and they did not let me leave until they forcibly removed what they wanted from me I was a prisoner of war for 15 whole minutes while I felt unsafe in my vehicle and wanted to leave and they wouldn't let me in my own home Think about that. I'm about to call the courthouse and see how to press charges over the phone since Timothy Charbonneau wants to be funny and tell me I can't go home to a church that allows me amnesty. You want to put your hands on me? You think it's funny to put people in handcuffs and laugh and go, hang on, wait. I'm going to do the classic Tim Charbonneau. Except he's not, he doesn't look like me. Look, 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 look. I'm 
Oh, and plus, I asked him about the phone number, because last time I asked him about the feds, I said I told the feds, and he went, Oh, I have a friend that works for the FBI. Can I give you his phone number? So either it was a burner phone of his, so he could just get information from me. But I asked him on the 14th, after he found me and confronted me about my vehicle and my homestead, which he doesn't believe it's a homestead and has personally towed once. They've all towed this at least once. I asked him for the phone number to that FBI agent and he drove away. <laughs> he went, no, I don't have time for this and left. So, that's about it. From your Spartan gladiator. You all know I ain't mean. They made me fight to go back home. Oh, they run at me. Oh, so bad. But hey, look that up. The the gladiatorial uprising of um, 73 AD. The gladiatorial uprising of Rome, led by Crixus, Spartacus, Dacus, Glacius, Tigris of Gaul. <laughs>